Hi, my name is Liron, and in this video, I'll share with you some life lessons and insights I gained from watercolor painting and painting in general. So I've been doing this intensively for about five years now, uh, and there's a lot. However, I compressed it into four main uh, kind of topics. Uh, and this is my first time making this kind of a video. So let me know in a comment down below if you enjoy that kind of thing. And if you do, I'll make more. So let's get started with what is probably my number one insight and that is letting go. Uh, watercolor is a tricky medium uh, on the one hand, there's a lot to learn uh, when it comes to controlling it, you know, water to paint ratio, different brush techniques, color harmony, composition, so much more. But on the other hand, no matter what you do, many aspects remain outside of your control. The water and paint mix together and at that point, mother nature has most of say in how that happens. Uh, I would even say that to some extent, watercolor isn't meant to be fully controlled uh, and that's part of its beauty and its uniqueness. And by the way, this also applies to other painting media, such as acrylics and oils. Uh, any painting media which is wet to some degree uh, has a bit of an aspect of randomness to it. Now, when it comes to that, you have to be able to let go and trust things will work out. Just like in life, uh, it's the same as in painting. A lot of variables are outside our control. We are all dealt a different hand. We all start in different places. And this is something that we have no control over. We have no say over uh, and we can also not really control other people we can't uh, affect their actions and thoughts and we probably don't want to uh, it's important to figure out what is in our control and what isn't and if something is then do what you can about it and if it isn't let it go Watercolor is actually a great lesson in stoicism in that regard. Uh, now, this is easier said than done, uh, but it has been one of the things I've been really trying to apply more and more uh, to my life. And I feel it definitely makes me a better person and provides me both a sense of control and also a sense of ease. Uh, and if you truly embrace it, something funny happens. You'll sometimes find that the things that are outside your control actually develop to become beautiful masterpieces, just like in painting. Next up, trusting the process. This is huge. When I got started in painting, a whole new world of possibilities opened up to me. I saw the huge potential of artistic growth, but progress was slow and barely visible, and at times it still seems to be the case even now. Uh, but it's actually not. It is overwhelmingly fast and intense. You don't even notice how much you grow by practicing until you look a couple of years back and then you see the difference or maybe even a couple of months. Uh, painting forced me to trust the process uh, if I were to persevere and actually stick to it. Despite the lack of visible growth, I trained myself to postpone disbelief. Sometimes you need faith in yourself, in your skills. This is true for long-term processes such as learning a skill like painting, but it is also true on a more micro level. For example, let's look at one individual specific painting process. You never really know what the final result is going to be like, and the worst part tends to be the middle. At the start, you have some kind of a vision, you gained inspiration, something led you to work on that piece of art or project or anything. This is true for starting a new project at work or maybe doing home renovations or anything else for that matter. In the beginning, you know what you want to some extent. Then work begins, you start doing what you can, but you are fully in work in progress, quote unquote, mode. Your painting, project or whatever it is looks nothing like your vision and it kind of sucks. But you have to power through because you had a vision initially, you knew what you wanted. And the more you continue working and building your trust and belief that it will work out, the result starts to emerge. And then once again, you are reminded that as long as it's executed well, the process actually works. As long as you believe it, you do the work you need to, things actually happen uh, and your vision comes to fruition and, and it becomes true. The next insight is patience. Now, this relates a little to trusting the process, but it's also quite different. The idea here is to fully immerse yourself in the process rather than jumping ahead. Many times when painting, I'd find myself wanting to jump right to the final details when I haven't even fully established the larger forms. You want to let things happen at their own pace. Sometimes it's fast and sometimes it's slow, but skipping over a part and getting to the end is usually not 
the right way to go. It's like when you go see a movie, you don't just want to get to the end of the movie. You want to enjoy the beginning. You want to appreciate the story, the characters, their struggles and challenges. And then when the time is right, you will get to the ending and hopefully it will be satisfying and wrap things up nicely. It's the same with any long term process. Instead of wanting to constantly jump to the point of, for example, being really good at whatever skill. How about instead you enjoy the ride and the journey of getting there? I suspect my natural inclination is impatience. I tend to be very impatient and watercolor has taught me to be a little more at ease with longer processes and to actually feel them as they occur rather than constantly mentally trying to jump into the future. Last but not least, speed and spontaneity. If you look around you, I would argue most people are slow. I'm usually on a schedule, so even when I'm just walking somewhere, I tend to walk at a fast pace. Uh, I have no time to lose usually and I find myself always having to juggle my way physically, maneuver through other people that are walking at a slower pace. This tends to be the case usually. With watercolor and wet media, speed matters. You have to be able to execute your technique fast. Now, this doesn't mean I'm going to finish a layer, barely wait a moment and then move on to the next one. It also doesn't mean I'll try to paint as fast as I can and kill myself doing so. This is more about being agile and fast when necessary. When I'm working on a layer, I will be fast because I don't want to lose the freshness of watercolor. I don't want the edges to dry. I want a fluid and a fresh wash that looks great. Sometimes in life you just have to be fast and perhaps even concentrate most of your efforts on one specific task. For example, did you know that uh, out of all the people who start writing a book, 97% never finish it? In my opinion, that has a lot to do with speed uh, and understanding our time here isn't endless and there are things to accomplish. Uh, sometimes working super slowly on a project actually leads to it never coming to fruition. Uh, and that is especially true for time sensitive ones, but also for evergreen projects that it doesn't really matter. There is no specific date. Once you stretch it and go slow, it may never end. So I try to work as fast as necessary and sometimes maybe even a little faster. Of course, it doesn't mean life has to be a string of stresses, worries and running around all the time. My speed bursts are very well contained in my opinion. However, they exist nonetheless. That's really important. There's also something to be said about flexibility and spontaneity. When things do move fast, you sometimes have to adapt and change. This is very true for painting. Sometimes happy accidents and natural occurrences can turn into beautiful results if you just let them. So instead of resisting these kinds of things, you might as well allow them to happen on their own and then continue moving forward. Don't let these things stop you or slow you down. And with that being said, these are all the lessons and insights I wanted to share with you for now. I hope you enjoyed this very different video of mine. If you have, smash the like button to let me know and also leave a comment down below if you have any questions or you want me to dive deeper on some kind of other topic in the future. This really means a lot to me and it will help me know what videos to make in the future. And with that being said, I will see you again in another video really soon.